boom boom oh, the sculpture of god yeah that's a good one yeah the the first the first reaction the first thought that i had when i came across this picture was during my entrance to stream entry on my second retreat so i was meditating for uh, at a going retreat 12 hours a day on the 10th day the last sit on the 10th day i was like i knew something was happening i just <laughs> knew something was happening i was like i have to sit through this sit and however long it takes, I'm going to stay there by myself, even after the going card discourse, if I have to. I just knew that I had to break through something here. I could feel it. So I was sitting there after like three hours. I could see this image sort of emerging just from the distance. It, at first, it was very small. It looks almost exactly like this. At first, it was very small. And then it became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's when I was already sort of doing self-inquiry, uh, sort of abiding in the awareness phase. That's what allows this to manifest. Because I was already pulling away from the Frankian entity, from the, the meditator entity even. Yeah. <clears throat> and this thing emerged, and I was like, the first reaction I had was like, holy fuck, this is fucking creepy. It's creepy because, it's first of all, it's so familiar. It's almost like that's, it's almost like that's home or like that, that's always been me. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's, it's extremely alien. There's a paradox there. That's the, yeah. the, the paradox. Yeah. And number three, I was just frightened. I was frightened for two reasons because that, I, do I really want to die? Do I really want to merge with the absolute or God? Do I really want to see my true nature? <laughs> Which is why we run away from the inward path. Here's the quote that we can put out. Everything that we do in life as separate individuals is to avoid the nothingness that you are. It's to avoid this. This is nothingness, which is why it's also everything. And then I was like, everything that I knew and experienced throughout my whole lifetime and from everybody is in there. That's the potentiality yeah. of the unmanifested, which is the same as the manifested. Is this, is this it? Everything we do in life is to avoid nothingness. The nothingness that we are. That we are. Let me. Yeah. Let me... So at that point, I was like, I could just stop meditating and then just you know go back to my life, or I could merge with this thing. There we so this thing, it's almost like the screen. The, the, the let's call it the screen. The screen of God, and then there's a screen of Frank, which is already detaching itself from itself. That's why the screen of God could appear uh, in the perception of the screen of Frank. But then they actually the same thing. So I was like, once I realized that, man, I have to do this. I don't know when I'm going to get another chance because after like 10 days of meditating for 12 hours, I, you know, this thing came up. I was like, you know, I don't know when I'm going to get another chance to die. Getting closer and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden I blanked out. I, I, I thought I could enter it. That, that was my original um, initial thought. I was like, I thought I could enter it and go into a tunnel and experience God unity or whatever. But then that wasn't the case. I totally blinked out. And that is the the, the, the secession right there. So in the secession, there's just nothing. It's almost like a, a few friends says they're taking it away from the, the cinema of your life. If there's still something, it's not it. So I, blinked, I completely blinked out. There was no experience at all. There's not even an experience of nothing or got nothing, which is almost like I fell asleep, but in a very high concentrated state. That's yeah. death right there. And then I came back in and then I just got sort of got popped out of the god of, of the godhead. Um and then it was this like whole body bliss. And then ever since after that, I knew I entered stream entry, the first stage of awakening, according to a Theravada Buddhist tradition. Now I used to be pretty attached to those paths, but not anymore, but just in accordance to the Theravada tradition, after that event was when everything just goes exponentially faster and faster. And then my perception after that just shifted. I could feel like, you know, my perception was panoramic 360, but there was still a bubble that, that where I still haven't broken through awareness yet. So at the time I was like, there, there, my, my head was, my head got really big, but there was still uh, a distortion. There was still the awareness that I could still sense a bubble. So that bubble has to expand, expand, expand. And the character has to continue to shrink, shrink, shrink. The secret has to continue to shrink, shrink, shrink until the secret is nothing. And there's no even bubble of awareness. There's not even consciousness. There's no way that the self can hide. Not even in awareness, not even in consciousness, not even nothing. So that was my first reaction when I saw that picture. You brought me back the memory of entering stream entry. And then, uh, yeah, that, that that is the the sculpture of the absolute. <laughs> that is your that is a depiction, even though you can't really depict what your true nature is. Um, and by the way, <clears throat> from the communion that I've had as well, validates also as well as the communion from the people that I've talked to 
and featured on the show around their realization. So that's really validating the many paths one end. And also that when you asked me a little bit ago to also unpack and describe what it is to transcend even the all-inclusive awareness itself, it is this. It's becoming the nothingness that we ex that we purposely are avoiding because the nature is the perfect warm of the eternal fire working away from nothingness. Right. The whole thing is infinity expressing itself away from nothingness, endlessly fractaling, just like this image, the sculpture of God is also in many ways. It is as we had when we first pulled up the program. It is like you see when you look up our homies over at Mattstown, these guys are the homies because it really is this. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about stuff like this, this being it, this being infinity, endlessly fractaling, expressing itself as your unique costume. Endlessly, your costume, Frank's costume, the 8 billion costumes right now, the next creation that has different vehicles, that has a different civilization, that has a different history, that has a different rock orbiting a star, that doesn't even have rocks orbiting stars, that doesn't even have nervous systems, it doesn't even have DNA. It has all this different, you can never come to the end and you will always be something new, you will always be something unique, yet you're also nothingness. Yes, yes. yeah, and so... So get used to, you know, Benoit Mandelbrot has this incredible math that then we turn into the visualization that is as close as we can right now. And Frank and I are aiming to collaborate on creating visuals that even help us recognize not only this, but also this specific expression of our creation and then going beyond that as well. And so just, you know, tap into stuff like this. And it will uh, enable you, like uh, we talk about this a lot on the show, but if you really just do simple stuff, like if you contemplate simple words, like contemplate, here's, here's a very short list. You have the comet. Is that which gives rise to even the fractals of infinity. <laughs> it's the inconceivable and infallible inevitable that gives rise even to those to that image to the animation right <laughs> yeah exactly you are that which ineffably gives rise to the infinite possibility yes yes, yes right. correct and that's why when you have people like nisar at the maharaj he would endlessly he would refuse whenever there would be any games of identity being played he would say you are that and Siddhara Meshwar would also say this who is his guru that as you think so you are so you're going to play the game of identity you're going to be your onion layers I'm going to only be the source of infinite possibility that's my nature that's who I am that's what this is and so I am that and I am not what you think is this body and so this form. And so when you contemplate, even intellectually, intellectually, as Frank indicated, you can work your way like gym repetitions up to the realize, to experience and to realize into realization, because these are your words. When you look up things like infinity, when you look up things like eternity, when you look up things like automata and recursion, what you realize is that we are that. These are the words that we are. When you look at the way that a cell hits a cell checkpoint and then undergoes mitosis. When you look at the way that two humans come together and reproduce to make a human, which then finds another human to reproduce, make a human, just like the oak tree drops an acorn that then makes more oak trees that drop more acorns. It's just recursion. It's automata. Go to the big bang, poof. And what happens? Automata, self-making, self-producing endlessly. And guess what? Cycle again. As Sir Roger Penrose, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2020, says that 
Where we are going is where we came from. We, it's a cyclic cosmology. Even the world's leading physicists themselves, which is really exciting for the synthesis of science and spirituality. So yeah, what were we talking about earlier about the uh, the symbols that the logos and the animation that you showed us with the, the looping it back on itself thing? Yes. Uh, that, that doesn't just apply to space. That also applies to time because time and space are the same fabric. Einstein said that himself. Um, he said that the past and the future and the present are just persistent illusions. Even he understood that without the direct experience of it, just through equations. So that infinite loop that I always tell people, I always like try to illustrate to people that snake biting its own tail, the universe eating itself, or this picture or whatever, that also applies to time. Because if you think about it, that loop, if you visualize that loop as a four dimensional space time, whatever is the case when you are born until you die is the case. There is some, okay, on the spiritual path, sometimes I tell people, whatever isn't there since the beginning of your birth until you die, or even before your birth, because it's gonna be experienced by other people, or even after you die, isn't it. So if you loop that thing from the beginning of your birth, whatever it is that stays constant, since the beginning of your birth until the, mo until the moment of now, until the moment you die, there's a loop. And within this loop, forms sort of shape shift inside it. So it's almost like in this, if you abide in this eternal loop, it's almost, it almost feels like whenever you think about the past, it's the same as thinking about the future. <laughs> it's almost like the past memory, it really feels like it hasn't happened. Because in this loop, everything's happening, but nothing's happening. When you think about the future, it seems like either it could already be past or it doesn't even exist. So it's like the past and the future and the present are loses meaning, the sequential events of past, future, present loses meaning. And even the now, even the power of now is empty because there really is no now. Because now is codependent arising through past and future. Yes. And the past never came. The past, sorry, if the I got fucked up, the past never came. That, that is kind of true. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to the conventional level for a little bit. If the future will never come, and if the past is already dead, it will never you know arise again, then the future cannot be uh, sorry, the present cannot be said to be exist either because they're codependent arising. Because you can still suffer in the in, in the power of now, actually. It, it, it's, you, you free up a lot of you free up a lot of stuff in the now. If you only abide in the now, you free up a lot of stuff. But in fact, if you take now to be the new ground, a new static thing, where it just be like, oh, there's only the now, you can still suffer in the now. But yeah. when so deconstructing it now, it's almost like deconstructing awareness. See, the self is such a cheeky con that it could abide, it could hide itself in awareness. Uh, same thing as hiding itself in the power of now. But once you construct and dissolve even awareness, when the self completely dissolves, when there's nothing, nowhere to hide, when you're just free flowing, uh, even the now ceases to be meaningful. <laughs> because the now and awareness almost simultaneously exist, one from the perspective of space and the other from the perspective of time. <laughs> once that last speck of self is dissolved, there's no now to abiding, there's no awareness to find solace in. It's just the inconceivable. Yes. But it's so simple. At the same time, it's so simple. It's so ordinary. And that is yes. why it's so ordinary. The more ordinary something is, the more normy something is, the more magnificent and more divine something is.